Welcome everyone to this very special weekend edition of Dads on Wrestling here on the Casa de Teen Studios YouTube channel. Bienvenidos. Oh, God. Padres de Lucha. Let's see. This is Jeff Meacham, of course, and he is the El, renegade of... El okay. renegado de lucha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This happens when you have too much Doritos. Right here. No, this tequila. is the side effect. No, 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 no tequila. He can't drink. This is the side effect. Taquitos. Taquitos. <laughs> We've lost that boy. We've lost that boy. What do we even have? Well, what do we have? We had, the, we, had the, we had the chicken wings last night. What did the taquitos talk? Oh, my God. Cállate, por favor. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do the rest of the show in Spanish. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll wait. No habla espanol? Ah, exactly. Thank you. Oh, my God, Jay. Let us be clear that somehow he managed to get a kid-sized mask over his big old head that was given to Dylan by... What's the guy's gimmick name? Is it is it El Dorito or whatever? Ah. Yeah. We'll see him at Battleground hopefully very soon. We're going to talk about that with the Doritos people. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that, although we are here to talk about First Friday because we had a very good time last night at First Friday at Long Beach Clothing Company. Si. Si. Uh, uh, el, uh, el, uh, let's say First Friday. First Friday. What's first? Uh, primero. Primero uh, de. Friday. Uh, Friday. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot what Friday is. That was like. A, okay. That's like let, basic let, high school. Let Spanish. me just kill this. Okay. Oh, oh thank God. Can't kill yourself getting the mask off. Nose, nose, nose. Oh! I hurt your nose. I hurt the mask more. Good grief. Your nose went. The humor's ran its course. Man, seriously. Your nose went. Your nose sat by about 20 feet when you did that. Oh my god. Well, that was. Sad boy, can I get my glasses, please? Oh my god. That was amazing. Now, now that, you know, the big reveal has been made. Yeah. <laughs> it's JJ, everybody! Like y'all didn't know. Yeah. Now, yesterday, first Friday, um, Long Beach Clothing Company uh, teamed up with Outer Limits Tattoo here in yes. Long Beach at the Pike. Yes, formerly Burt Grimm's, a.k.a. the oldest tattooed parlor in the United States. The second oldest in the world. And according to some Swedish girls they've talked to, they don't even know about the one in Sweden. So, yeah. you know, we, we rock. I love Long Beach. Um, we went over there to Long Beach Clothing Company, and if you were one of the first 25 people to name five civic areas in the Long Beach area, you got yourself the logo. Which, uh, ironically, is why I'm wearing this shirt, because I realized that the civic areas are on the back. That's very true. They are. So you could have just gone, da, 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 yesterday, and you'd be like, you know, okay, well, the first five can go off the shirt. <laughs> Help us out. There you go. There's the... There's the Civic Areas of Long Beach, folks. There you go. Um, we named some of those yesterday. I ended up being number 25 because I found out that they were going to do only part of the tattoo, and I didn't want that to happen, so I made sure I got my full one. And you'll be seeing that a little bit later. That's right. This man got his very first tattoo yesterday, and he was not just going to settle for an outline. He wanted the real deal, Holyfield, you That's know, right. pre-ear bitten off. You know, so I feel like I was getting my ear bitten off, kind of. Yeah. He oh, held on yeah. tight to the very end. Yeah. Did not even get in the chair until five to midnight. Yeah, it was it was bad. It <laughs> was pretty nuck and futz. But to, to be all fair, things considered, yes, I will give Outer Limits an extreme amount of credit because yeah. they they got called in. I think it was Thursday. Yeah, zero hour. Zero please. hour, please. And, you know, big, big ups to Jay and Sean and Kenji and Robert and everybody at Long Beach Clothing for putting it together and making things happen when literally they got crap dumped in their lap pretty much last minute. Yeah. They, they, not, they and Outer Limits did amazing work considering how little time they had. So, um, let me, uh, what are we doing? Oh, we have, oh, we have a flyer, okay. Yes, we did. I forgot about the flyers. These will be on the table at Battleground, coming up on the 28th of July. I hope you all can see these okay. And if you can't, then go to uh, whatever the website is. Those are all the locations. They have four convenient locations within SoCal. Just a little bit of the work they've done. Yes. That Vincent Price one is amazing. I saw that yesterday in the flyer. I was like, that'd be perfect for your... For the uh, for the Captain EO fan and all of us, 
That's right. That's right. But again, this is a wrestling show. Yes. And while we are very excited about our new ink, we have to talk about wrestling. And we attended this yesterday <laughs> at Golden Company. But it was too damn loud. It was it, like we were stuck in a club. It was it was chaotic and mischief and mayhem, and we had people walking in front of the camera, and they apologized, which was cool and everything. But it was just like it was nuts. So we so, are here to talk about tomorrow's Destination X yes. pay per view event, the night where the X Division takes center stage. And it is very rare that we talk about the X Division or TNA period on this show as far as pay per views are concerned. Yes, yeah, somebody busted us out for that on Facebook, yeah. saying that they hoped that we were going to do this. Because we never talk about TNA, and it's like, we talk about TNA when it's relevant. Unfortunately, they're not yeah. relevant on a weekly basis. But the pay-per-view coming up tomorrow night is very relevant. Like you said, the X Division is what made TNA famous at the end of the day. Yes, you have your Kurt Angles and your Christian Cages and your Samoa Joes, who is actually in the X Division anyway at the time. But you have guys who, you know, primarily are in the X Division that r raised TNA's bar considerably in their pre-Spike TV days. Yes, the AJ so. Styles, the Frankie Kazarians, the Christopher Daniels, the Petey Williamses, the Chris Saban. Saban and Alex Shelley, yes. um, Very, uh, Sanjay Dutt, Amazing Red, yep. X-Pac. Yes, six pac when he was there, absolutely. You yes. know, um, Kaki Siaki, Sunny Siaki. Yes. Um, Kid Cash. Kid oh, Cash. Like that, um, yeah. The Flying Elvises. Yes, yes. Remember Which those featured guys? Jimmy Wang Yang. Yeah, you remember that? If y'all remember that, post a video response. Just make sure you don't use copyright to footage, just because we can't endorse that. Yeah. All right. We are going to go from the main event down, because at the end of the day, I feel the exhibition is the most important thing on this show. And, and it is, plus, you know, as we get towards the X Division stuff, there's a lot that is still up in the air as far as right. the card goes. Right. So but we can only speculate yes. on that one. The main event slated is one of the most anticipated events, and, God damn it, anticipated main events. So anticipated, I can't even say that we're anticipated. Um, main events I can remember in TNA, Impact, whatever you want to call it, history, as Austin Aries, the man who surrendered the X Division Championship to get this oh, shot. The greatest man that ever lived. Faces, basically cashed in like a money in the bank opportunity. Yeah, faces the man who has passed AJ Styles and passed everybody except Jeff Jarrett. I want to make that clear right now. As far as the history of TNA, Bobby Roode is not the longest reigning champion. As far as TNA history, Bobby Roode's the longest reigning champion that had, didn't book himself into that spot. As Jeff Jarrett was NWA champion for 320-something days. He is the longest reigning TNA, TNA World heavyweight, heavyweight Champion. champion. But, but you know, they always say he's the longest reigning heavyweight champion, world champion in TNA history. It's like, yeah, if you go back five years. Yeah, in the history of the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, that's very true. Anyway, Bobby... Come on, Mike Tanay, you're supposed to be the freaking professor. Yeah, you gave me the Professor Junior nickname, and I'm, and I'm not professoring you here, homie. Hire Stat Boy to get your stats straight. Stat Boy approved! That's right. So... And he's got a better mustache than Don West. Uh, oh! Junior! You got to be kidding me! <laughs> Dude, you sound like Percy doing the Ray Rosas gimmick. Seriously. But it was funny. Ole. <laughs> no, it's over there. Um, I am looking forward to this match. Probably more, well, not more than anything on the card, because the card is pretty stacked. But um, we talked about this yesterday. We've talked about it since Impact, and actually since it was announced in the first place. And I am of the feeling that while it's been teased that Bobby's going to go to Bound for Glory and drop it to James Storm... I gotta, I, I gotta believe that Austin is going to, even if it's a brief reign, take the gold from Bobby. See, and I got a feeling that TNA is gonna do what they always do, and at the end of the day, Dusty finishes. Oh, jeez. And Austin will get the victory, just not the title. Okay. I hope we're wrong on that one. Yeah. Because Austin deserves it so much. He, Austin, you know, people will crap on Austin Aries. You know, kind of like the cripple. Kind of like, I was, I, I wasn't gonna bust her out, but okay. Why not? She's here in the background making sound effects. I'm sure the camera's picking it up, so you yeah, know, yeah. may as well make it known he's making those gag sound effects. At least she's not sneezing. That's, uh, well, that's because Stat Boy's not sitting in the chair. She's only allergic to shows that feature Stat Boy. That's right. Um, Ooh. I think. I think it's because he didn't get the tattoo. He was the only one in the group 
of legal age that wasn't willing to get a tattoo. And Dylan actually has one of them for him. That's he's, right. He's, he's got one. He has a temp one, but he's got it. That's right. He's going to get it on today. Some um, LB kid. What's that? Some LB kid. I know, a right? A the LB kid doesn't even want an LB tattoo to represent. Oh. That was towards him, not you guys. Hashtag, but but hurt stat boy. <laughs> That's right. All right. Hashtag off topic. Next match on the card. Last man standing. Oh, my the God. The fallen angel Christopher Daniels versus the phenomenal AJ Styles. If Arguably are. two of the men who built the X Division. I say, you want to showcase the X Division? There it is right there, folks. Um, it's uh, it's going to be shenanigans and and uh, uh, mischief and mayhem, I think, plenty because it's last man standing. There are no rules, which means Frankie can get involved if he so chooses. But if they want to book this right, and you and I, again, we talked about this yesterday during taping number 1.0, um, Chris needs to win as clean as possible. Yeah. In the last man standing. In the last know, man standing, there's going to be all kinds yeah, of stuff going on. Yeah, there's going to be shenanigans, on. there's going to be weapons, there's yeah. going to be violence and mayhem, like you said. But right. when you go back in TNA history, Christopher Daniels has really only ever beaten AJ with shenanigans and cheating. This is very and true. And I think in order to make Christopher Daniels relevant again as a viable singles competitor... He needs a solid victory over the phenomenal one. And because at the end of the day, the phenomenal AJ Styles is TNA. He is TNA's John Cena. Yes, definitely. And I think that having him win over Daniels at this point with the new allegations about him being the bastard daddy would be a waste of time. <clears throat> and a waste that, of a story. A though. waste of a story and had that thrown in there just to have AJ just beat him up and beat him one, two, three. Right? I, think last that, man standing. I think that the whole relevation of AJ being this bastard father needs to be weighing in AJ's mind and allowing Daniels the advantage. Mm -hmm. AJ is so caught up in the fact that he's been outed at this not very good Southern boy as everybody thought he was. Mm -hmm. He's cheating on his wife and now fathering a bastard kid. Yes. That he's so distracted by all that that Daniels just gets the better of him. I would have to agree with that, absolutely. Um, the other non X Division tournament involvement match is another one that features two former X Division champions the Samoan two. submission machine, Samoa Joe, versus your Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. I was going to give him former world tag team champions, former world heavyweight champions, and be over dramatic about it because Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe deserve that. Because Angle and Joe are awesome. Just like AJ and Daniels are awesome. But, you know, some people. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's Let's all right. Play. Oh, okay. Former X Division champions in this match. Yes. Former World Tag Team champions in this match. Very much so. Former World Heavyweight champions in this match. Yes. We've got the two guys who have main evented pay per views. Left and right, but this, as we talked about, this feud's kind of simmered off a little bit. And kind of lowered the temperature. But now it's going to rise back up with the opportunity to get a possible 10 points. Because both these guys are submission specialists. We've got the Samoa Smith <coughs> Machine, as you've said many times. Samoa Joe versus the Olympic gold medalist, your Olympic hero. Darn it. Kurt Angle. He's my Olympic hero. I don't know about yours, but he's definitely mine. He's fine. Yeah, except for the fact that we can't really wear you can't really wear his shirt to like American events. Yes, seriously, I was gonna wear my Kurt Angle shirt on the Fourth of July, but the one I have has the flag on the front. It <coughs> says "You suck" right across the American flag, and then the back has got the two words for our enemies, and then all the enemies that were of the United States right after 9/11. Yeah, so it's like it's like so it's like if you read the whole shirt, you get it and you don't get offended. Right. But people that, you know, just walking past me as I, like, walk through the mall and see you suck on the American flag, they're like, get the hell out of my country. They'll be like, well, they, they don't get it. it. They, they, they probably wouldn't say very much. They'd probably do a lot of swinging. <sighs> but anyway, yes, Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe, the renewal of a great rivalry that captured TNA for the better part of, God, two years before the main event Mafia Easily. took over. Because yes. they were both in the Mafia for a minute. Which was um, horrid. Which was god awful. Was so I mean, I liked the mafia and the gimmick behind it. But Joe, but 
Joe being a yes man within the confines of that group was yeah. just for it. Yeah, well, they realized how bad it was right away because they injured Joe right away in a storyline and they moved Tass in the booth and they got rid of Don. So it was like, they knew right away how bad it was. Yeah. Thank God they realized. The one that the one brief glimmer of hope they've had that they effed up, they did it. <clears throat> but this one is going to be awesome. Again, it's Bound for Glory series, which means a maximum of 10 points on the line. You know, if you get a submission victory, they, Kurt has the ankle lock, Joe's got the Cochina clutch. <coughs> Excuse me. They both have their pinfall move. Yeah, that's only seven points. Angle slam versus the muscle buster. I I have a feeling that the distraction within AJ's heart and soul is going to affect his tag team partner as well. I don't. And I think that Kurt is going to lose to Samoa Joe. I think I think Joe needs it more than Kurt does. I agree with you there, but Kurt is one track mind. He steps between those ropes, <clears throat> and he's a machine. Right. There is nothing that can derail him. Mm -hmm. You know? I don't think either one's going to get a submission victory, though. Okay. I think even though both men are submission experts, they're going to be so focused on the submission that one of them is just going to slip up, and they're going to get the pinfall. Hmm. And, do you and I say that someone is going to be Samoa Joe. Because like you said, I think Joe needs this more than Kurt. Kurt yeah. has more or less owned Joe every time they faced off. Yes. Very rarely has Joe gotten a victory. It goes back to the A.J. Daniels theory. Yep. Joe was more or less made a joke of last year's Bound for Glory series. Oh, I was just He was on that, that yeah. huge losing streak. Yep. Joe needs to redeem himself. And the best way to make an impact, pun intended, is to beat the Olympic gold medalist. And it's like, you know what, Kurt, Kurt has owned the world championship pretty much since he showed up in TNA. Especially, oh, yeah. especially on the cusp of the Olympics. Yes. The Olympics are right around the corner. And what better way for Joe to make a statement than to beat the former Olympic gold medalist? The man who was attempting to get, make his comeback in the Olympics this year before things petered out. So I, I agree with that. Samoa Joe. All right. Now... The fun stuff, because only one of these matches is set in stone. Yes. Everything else is very much up in the air. All right. There will be a tournament tomorrow With night. Eight men. To crown a new X Division champion. Seven of those men are set in stone. Yes. We they have... They are Douglas Williams, Kid Cash, Zima Ion, Sanjay Dutt... Who were signed because of their... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Sanjay earned his spot. Yeah. Doug, Cash, and Zima were TNA contractor wrestlers, or in Doug's case, Ring Kai King contractor wrestlers, that were brought in and, uh, you know, you get a spot by default. Yeah. The other guys were in the name, had a name there. Sanjay Sanjay Dutt, yes. Rashad Cameron, Flip Casanova, and Kenny King. Now, I want to talk about Kenny King for a second, if I may. Okay. Kenny King, for those of you who don't know, as of Wednesday night, <laughs> was the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champion, along with Red Titus. All of a sudden, Kenny's in Orlando, wrestling for TNA. And Ring of Honor's website issued a statement saying that they had come to a verbal agreement to extend his contract, and him being a TNA broke that verbal agreement, broke that contract, and he has since been essentially terminated from Ring of Honor and been stripped of the World Tag Team Championships. Now, you presented the theory during taping 1.0 yesterday that, you know, obviously, you know, that Which is an outdated reference because they're not going to see that. Well, no, but we, no, <laughs> well, 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 no, but we talked about it, so yes. I, I, I wanted to bring it up. And it's a very important point that, you know, it very well could be what you discussed. What you discussed. So, I read online somebody posed the theory about this is all just an elaborate storyline. Mm -hmm. It goes back to the realism that's been lacking from pro wrestling, which kind of started to get reinserted last year with the infamous pipe bomb. Mm -hmm. You know, is this all part of some sort of quote-unquote invasion type of storyline from Reign of Honor? Mm -hmm. You potentially have Austin Aries becoming the World Heavyweight Champion for TNA. Mm -hmm. You have Christopher Daniels as one half of the Tag Team Champions. You have Samoa Joe, one of the longest reigning ROH champions, if not the longest reigning, in a huge spot on the card, <clears throat> you know, definitely made his name in Reign of Honor. Mm -hmm. 
You've got Nigel and now you've got the way, you know. and now you've got this Kenny King guy, who was a tough enough reject, mm -hmm. you know, made it onto the second season but didn't win, right? Who has honed his craft in Reign of Honor so much so that he is now a former ROH Tag Team Champion as of Thursday afternoon. Yeah, seriously. But it's just way too convenient that that post from ROH went up almost as soon as Kenny's match ended. True. True. You know, and it's like, if you didn't know he was going to be on the show, how could it have been up that quick? Because Ring of Honor watches the impact. That's what I'm saying, though. It's like, they may or may not have caught that episode if they hadn't known in advance. You know, how do we know that whoever runs Reign of Honor wouldn't have DVR'd it and watched it like the next day? Very true. You know, maybe they were trying to negotiate deals on the telephone for their upcoming show next weekend. Maybe. Get things set in stone. Maybe. <clears throat> it's just way too convenient to me that Kenny won the match, statement was on the website. Right. And now we're thinking, you know, of all the guys that are involved, including the four for the eighth spot, which we'll I'll go ahead and roll that off now. <clears throat> There's a four-way match to determine the eighth and final con uh, competitor. Yes. Rubix, who is Jigsaw from Combat Zone, if you don't know. Uh, Dakota Darso, who is Barry's son. Barry, of course, was Demolition Smash and the Repo Man. And uh, Blacktop Bully, if you watched WCW, but we all know you didn't watch WCW. Mm -hmm. um, Mason Andrews, which I spelled without a W for some reason on my notes here. A.K.A. And Scorpio, Scorpio Sky. Sky. And... Jade's favorite of the eight, Lars Only, a.k.a. Johnny Yuma. He's Johnny Yuma. Oh, he's, he's got Johnny a new Yuma. name. Oh, <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> he actually posted, I don't know if you've seen his Twitter, he actually posted a picture of the backside of his trunks with the word only on it. I was like, oh, Johnny. Oh, boy. But those four guys will compete to fill the eighth and final slot. Now, I I've got to say, realistically, I think the spot is going to go to Jigsaw. Okay. Because of his notoriety. Mm -hmm. Well, of the four, he is the least known unless you live in the Northeast. Which is a lot closer to Orlando right, than right. Hollywood is. I mean, because you've got Dakota Darso, who, you know, his name is known, and Sky and Yuma, who are both very well known out here, you know, and they're making their name known in other parts of the country. You know, Sky and Yuma both been traveling. I think Yuma and Good Times went to Japan, as a matter of fact. So they had a good time over there. And it's that phone. Da -da -da! There's only one right now out here, and it's over there. We're just going to let it go. Let it go. Um, as much as I would like to see Sky and Vin Yuma win in that order, mm -hmm. like I said, I have a feeling it's going to go to Jigsaw, a.k.a. Rubix. Okay. And as far as the whole thing goes, I'm going to have to go for Kenny King. Because yeah. I think... If this isn't a storyline, an elaborate production, yeah. I think that it's really dumb for him to breach a contract, yes. appear on a rival TV show, get stripped of his tag team title and fired, to walk away with nothing at the end of the day. I would, I would have to agree. You know, even in terms of storyline, why would you walk away from the Ring of Honor Championship, tag championship, and notoriety Ring of Honor to be a just another X Division guy? Yeah. Be and, a champ, you know? And yeah. Kenny King getting the strap would be a huge thing for TNA right now because of the gossip factor. Yes. You know, at the end of the day, Kid Cash doesn't need it right now. If he was going to get it, he should have gotten it from Austin already. When he first came back, yeah. Douglas Williams doesn't need it. No. Zima Ion doesn't deserve it. No, he really doesn't at all. You know, Sanjay Dutt has never had it. Deserved it back in the day, but I don't really know if he's on game enough to win the title. And if there was a guy we'd pick outside of Kenny, I'd probably go with Sanjay, to be perfectly yeah. honest with you. And then the rest of the guys, you know, Rashad Cameron shouldn't have won over Sky. No. Flip Casanova was impressive. But shouldn't have beat Yuma. <laughs> well, no, he beat Darso. Oh, who beat Yuma? And then the last guy... Um, Kenny King. Oh, Kenny King beat you. Okay, well, there you go. That's yeah. why. That's why. Okay. That so. was deserved. <laughs> I love no you, Johnny. No disrespect to you, but yeah. No disrespect to you, but yeah. I love you, Johnny, but yeah. If you go with this whole Kenny King thing, somebody had to bite it. 
Um, I gotta agree with you on Kenny King. He's he's the one that's going to be the the, the toast of the town, win or lose. Yeah. You know, more more likely win, obviously. But he's gonna be toast of the town because of him leaving Ring of Honor the way he did, if he even did it the way he did it. Yeah. Um, it's it's going to be a very interesting night tomorrow night. Yes, as we, it will. After we tape all these, uh, uh, after we tape here, we're gonna be you know just watching the show, and then we'll have our post show, and it's going to be very interesting. Day tomorrow, it's going to be an interesting week on the shows. We've got After the Bell, we've got Renegade, which, uh, I don't know, are, are we having Renegade this week? I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided yet. Stay tuned Tuesday and find out. Yes. Uh, what are we doing on RSI? Do you know what we're doing on RSI? RSI is McCruber. Oh, God. I think. I hope not. I think we did plug it, though, on the Holds Bar Week. Yes. Ugh. I didn't watch that. McCruber. So. Ugh. But before we go, the big reveals... At least on the, the dad's portion. There's Jay's. There you go. This is the official logo. One of the official logos. They've got about 20 of Long Beach Clothing Company. That's the LB. And if I can get this thing up here. I don't know how it, know how it looks like this. But there you go. I, I, I put a picture on Twitter if y'all know, can't see it. Put a picture on Twitter. This is the first one ever. We'll see Jade's on RSI. You want to show it on RSI? Okay. And Aaron's when Aaron's show goes up. You guys are done taping. All right, so, <laughs> so there you go. Be on the lookout this weekend for our traditional weekend shows. Yes, we're going to be talking about our favorite television shows of all time, with Ringside Renegades, um, Stat Boys oh. Bill, and Double Down with Double A will be making his first weekend appearance. The return of Double Down with Double That's A. That's right. Oh He's my God. He's going to be talking about his top ten shows. Um, like Jeff said, the post show after the pay per view. It's going to be a very very busy. Yes. Upload weekend for us. And are you guys confirmed for your plans before? Yes. All right. There's going to be a review of Spider Man, Spider Man, Friendly Neighborhood Spider Man, which I'm looking forward to seeing, and you guys are going to see it. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to make sure we avoid the spoiler department. There we go. Good stuff. So I am the Renegade of Wrestling, JJ Williams. I am El Michoacin, Senor Michoacin, Senor Michoacin. Si. And we will see you tomorrow with our post-show thoughts. Mañana. See. Sí.